हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल सो वेलकम टू द लेक्चर नोट्स सीरीज अंडर फार्मेशनरी स्प्रेइंग एंड पेस्ट कंट्रोल इज द चैप्टर सो लेट अस डिस्कस अबाउट द स्प्रेइंग मशीन एंड हाउ टू कंट्रोल द पेस्ट इन द फील्ड एक्चुअली क्रॉप्स सो लेट अस गो टू द स्प्रेयर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल व्हाट इज स्प्रेयर स्प्रेयर इज ए मशीन टू अप्लाई फ्लूइड्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ड्रॉपलेट्स सो जनरली स्प्रेयर इज यूज्ड फॉर द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ herbicides to control weeds uh, fungicides to control fungus disease or fungus to apply, apply insecticides uh, to control insects and pests to also apply micronutrients such as some uh, fertilizers or hormones or any other thing for the plant growth and next is the function of the sprayer what is the function of the sprayer first of all to break the liquid droplets of effective size because we cannot apply very large amount of liquid in the field so small amount of liquid has to be uh, break, broken into small droplets of required size then the next function of the sprayer is to distribute them uniformly over the plants so basically the it, it is to move in such a way that it can distribute the uh, same droplets into uniform uniformly over the all the plants and also to regulate the amount of liquid to avoid excess application because excessive application will lead to the soil pollution and loss of the chemical so chemical is also very costly so therefore it will be regulating the amount of liquid to uh, apply actually for the different crops different amount of uh, chemicals is to be applied next is the basic applicators Uh, so we, uh, all of us know that what are the different type of applicators uh, used by the farmers first of all the hand pump sprayers so hand pump sprayers we must have used in the kitchen gardens and other uh, in the home appliances here actually so here actually very small uh, liquid is in a container and there is a small nozzle is there so you can see here is a nozzle and there is a pushing and or uh, for the or uh, you can say is the plunger of the pump so you can say just push it and there will be the liquid will be there here from the tip so therefore this is called the hand pump sprayer next is the back sprayer sprayer the sprayer which is carried on the back of the farmer in the field so this is called the back sprayer sprayer actually it can be easily mounted over the back of the laborers or farmers next the boom sprayer basically it is a uh, mounted on the tractor and it's a be long uh, boom where actually number of nozzles are there and they spray the uh, spray particles in the field so they are called therefore it's called a boom sprayer high pressure sprayer where actually uh, we cannot reach uh, to the point actually the boom cannot reach so the jet is produced through high pressure therefore it's called the high pressure sprayer actually then air assisted sprayer instead of uh, directly putting the liquids into the Uh, field uh, crop so there will be air stream will be there with the uh, droplets so that the uh, drops will be uh, deposited directly over the leaf or the stem or any back side of the leaf because also the air assisted sprayer uh, shakes the uh, plants so that uh, the amount of uh, 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 droplets are uniformly distributed over all the parts of the uh, plant so it's more efficient than uh, or general uh, sprayers so the, but it's a, it is it is having a long uh, blower uh, a blower will be there a axial blower and also there will be a long uh, you can say a tunnel uh, where actually a, a air is supplied and there will be holes so that uh, and uh, along with the booms the air is supplied next is the aerial sprayer so here actually it can be uh, used for spraying or granular application so generally for the big fields or uh, very large fields generally it is applied uh, from the uh, aerial route next the granular granular uh, application or applicator where actually there is a small uh, revolving type uh, fan or something like that uh, so it broadcast broadcasting type or plate type uh, revolving plate which actually distribute the granular uh, uh, either the pesticide or uh, chemicals or any uh, fertilizers there are applied and engine sprayer or power sprayer where actually on the back of the 
uh, uh, with the backpack sprayer instead of manual application a small engine is mounted so that it called the power sprayer mostly uh, it, it is used for uh, small application next coming to the spare components so first of all tank so uh, since there should be uh, some uh, container which can contain the uh, liquid which is to be uh, distributed throughout the field therefore tank is the integral part of the sphere mostly tank is having different uh, rectangular size circular or cylindrical uh, basically it is having a very uh, big lid over it at our mouth so that cleaning will be easier next is the pumps and strainers or agitation so pumps is the most important uh, component of the sphere which actually pumps the liquid to the nozzle from the tank so it gives the pressure so that pressure is required to atomize the liquid at the nozzle so basically pumps will be different type of pumps we will discuss and there will be strainer because mostly the pumps used in the case of sphere is uh, positive displacement or closed uh, pumps so that strainers might most uh, is very much needed to uh, remove the foreign particles or uh, abrasive material so that it cannot damage the pumps or any other uh, especially the nozzle also clogging of nozzles cannot take place so therefore strainers are important and agitation agitation again the uh, uh, liquid uh, this water and uh, chemicals uh, has to be mixed properly in the solution so therefore continuous agitation is required otherwise there will be a layer of uh, chemicals over the uh, tank so that uh, uneven application of uh, uh, chemicals will be there in the field next is the pressure gauge so pressure gauge is needed in the case of uh, uh, sphere because we need to know how much pressure is uh, working pressure so that the droplets can be controlled and also the pressure can be generally controlled uh, according to the discharge and the uh, nozzle uh, that means the droplet size so droplet size and discharge is uh, dependent on the pressure so therefore there is no need to regulate the pressure and uh, always it is uh, uh you have to check how much pressure is flowing on the uh, sphere next is the hoses flow control assemblies basically the flow has to be controlled because the discharge has to be controlled how much uh, discharge rate should be there so that the application rate can be controlled controlled and hoses are the pipes which carries the uh, liquid from the uh, generally from pump to the nozzles or at the delivery point so hoses and flow control assemblies are also part of the so there then distribution system depending on the uh, how much has to be distributed the what side and which has to be closed or uh, open so therefore we uh, if a complex system is used therefore there should be a distribution system also uh, then the most important part of the uh, sphere will be the nozzles which actually atomizes the uh, spray uh, into the droplets so basically uh, there will be the inside the uh nozzle there will be small orifice and also there will be swivel plate inside that one so uniformly it will uh, take make the different uh, pattern of the uh, droplets so let us see so these are the components next is the type of pumps basically different type of pumps are used first is the roller pump so here actually number of rollers are there inside a revolving disc so that when the rollers move they will create the uh, pressure on the so this is a positive displacement pump then centrifugal pump which are actually non positive displacement pump or variable displacement pump so here actually mostly when there is low pressure uh, required these are used uh, then diaphragm pumps they are also having a diaphragm so that it can uh, uh, create a positive pressure piston pumps are mostly widely used so which are called also called the plunger pumps so these are the having a piston and small cylinder and uh, basically the it is called the reciprocating type pumps and this is a positive discharge pump mostly they are used in the spray then peristal uh, peristal uh, pump pumps they are also used for the spray ha huh. so in peristal pump so there is a flexible pipe which is uh, 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 squeezed by the revolving cam type structure so when it is squeezed the fluid is actually moved and the pressure is built up so this is about the different type of pumps used so 
So next is the uh, spray outlet. So that means how the actually the sprayer is actually working from uh, starting from the tank. So basically this is the outlet. So this is a tank. Tank is having a, a different type of tanks is there. And uh, there is an agitator here actually jet agitator is there. There is an inlet to that uh, tank uh, uh, pump actually. There is a tank shut off valve. So tank is either shut when it is not required. Then this pipe is lead to the strainer. First strainer will be there from the tank. Then to the pump. So there is a pump. So pump will uh, will be different type of pumps can be used. So in this case, so the, after the pump, it will go to the pressure relief valve. So pressure relief valve actually controls the uh, pressure. So uh, sometimes uh, high pressure might be there. So the pressure relief valve uh, will bypass the uh, excess liquid if uh, the pressure is very high. So therefore, this is the bypass valve to the uh, tank. So then again, there is another uh, pipe from the pressure. There is the uh, part of the liquid is just uh, passed through a, a agitation line or th through the throttling valve so that it uh, jet is produced inside the uh, tank so that it is agitated continuously. So this is called the jet agitator. Next coming to the after the pressure relief valve. So the liquid is uh, directed to the gauging filter and uh, as a fittings. So there are number of booms will be there. So they will be supplied through the a distribution uh, line or uh, uh, ball valves so then they will go to the boom section so in this case there are three booms are, are there if it is a foldable or otherwise if it is a single boom it might be single boom or uh, this multiple booms will be there in the boom uh, sprayer actually so this is a mechanical sprayer mostly this is not related to uh, any uh, manual or small uh, sprayers so actually this is uh, fully automated automated actually the, everything should be done by the machine so therefore this is the spray out, uh, outlet of the uh, spraying pattern okay so next coming to the spray sprayer classification so first is depending upon the volume of spray required per hectare the application is categorized under uh, high volume spray that is a or hb where actually more than 150 liter of a liquid is applied per hectare of the field effect uh, per hectare of crop any type of crop so this is called the high volume sprayer. Uh, the sprayer which can uh, be able to uh, handle this amount, they, they are called high volume sprayer, the big one. Next one is the, basically this is suitable for insecticides, fungicides and herbicide, any uh, uh, variety of different uh, variety of uh, applications, generally high volume sprayer can be used. This low volume sprayer, approximately 10 to 150 liter per, per hectare is application rate, this is called the low volume. So it is generally suitable for insecticide and fungicides. Mostly herbicides are not used uh, uh, as a low volume sphere. High volume is used for herbicides. Next uh, is the ultra low volume sphere where actually very low volume of spray is used around 1 liter to 5 liter per hectare. So very small amount actually the uh, spray is uh, accurately automized. Generally it is used for the insecticide uh, suitable for insecticides because it has to be uh, uh, break into uh, very small particles with a proper device so it's, which can be done with a high rpm uh, spinning disc applicate appliances motorized naphtha sphere they can, can also produce very fine uh, droplets which can lead to the low volume spray next coming to the Spraying efficiency. What is spraying efficiency? Because uh, when we apply the liquid, some of the uh, spray is drifted away actually. That means there is not deposited in the target. Therefore, uh, we actually generally uh, uh, apply more than what is required by the field. So that some of the liquids are lost. Therefore, spraying efficiency is called the minimum spray volume required. That means excess divided by actual spray volume should have been required. There is actual spray is required. Uh, uh, applied uh, is more than the minimum spray volume required. So in this case, minimum spray volume rate is one liter. We apply 1.5 liter because of uh, depending on the loss due to the drift and other things. If winds are strong or some other factors are there, then it is lost. And also some of uh, are not contacted with the uh, that is means leap and other things. So this it is more uh, amount of is applied. So they actually applied is more and minimum should have been done. So this is the minimum divided actual that is uh, spraying efficiency 
and leaf area index is the uh, this area of uh, a crop under leaf is called the leaf area index this leaf area you have the ground area of the field and if you see the droplet size varies from different uh, insect to the uh, application so for insects flying insects the droplet size is very less there is 10 to 50 micron insects on the foliage there is 30 to 5, 50 microns foliage means uh, the uh, leaves were actually very small uh, all the leaves should be covered so therefore it is around 40 to 100 uh, uh, specially applied for the um, nutrients and other things so that it reached to the stomata so little overflow should be there and for soil applicator it should be over flooded so this way the uh, particle size is uh, very big there is 250 to 500 microns so next coming to the spray solution characteristic first is the sur surface tension so surface tension specially affects the droplet size and uh, uh, more uh, surface tension there will be flow will be less then density the more density the flow of rate will be reduced viscosity also influences the flow and the pattern of the spray so therefore it resists to flow next is the application methods first is the broadcasting method so broadcasting might be three first is air broadcasting through the aerial sphere the ground broadcasting by the broadcaster any type of uh, granular machines which can be broadcasted through the ground or it can be by wood for the marine or uh, aquaculture uh, type of applications so next is coming the band application where actually it is applied in band so where actually the row crops are there mostly and track and service uh, previous service that is uh, generally where the cracks or uh, that is the corner of the uh, house or any type where actually termites or uh, small ants and other things will be there that this applica application is done small applicator so therefore this is called the crack and service uh, application method next coming to the spot application so where actually uh, it is the application method where actually it is needed mostly on the spot the spray has to be applied the vessel application mostly the at the base of the tree is applied it is for the vessel application space treatment is basically to uh, uh, in the air some flying insects or any other things are there to control them basically in space uh, fox or other things are applied that is called the space treatment t or steam injection for the growth or some uh, uh, enhancement of the uh, any anything so food or something like that so hormones or any other uh, uh, pesticides mostly not used for the tree or steam injection basically that uh, chemicals are injected through the syringe to the base of the uh, or stem of the uh, tree next is the rope wick or wiper treatment for the very green uh, vegetables where actually uh, the it's very sensitive to uh, sensitive to uh, chemicals uh, if it is flooded then uh, it will uh, come to the food chain therefore uh, very uh, uh, gently it is wiped from the uh, leaves so through a weak uh, roof uh, arrangement so this is called the different application methods then placement of the uh, spray or uh, any pesticides there is called the foliar foliar application where actually the sprays are deposited on the uh, leaves or foliage of the uh, crop this is called the foliar application soil injection mostly the uh, uh, liquid is actually injected into the soil or uh, the granular uh, chemicals are actually deposited at the soil so or injected into the soil that's why it's called the soil injection placement uh, basically the base of the tree for the root or uh, control the uh, different diseases or uh, uh, moths in at the root it is generally injected to the soil then soil incorporation during tillage some of the pesticide or uh, sometimes uh, that is fertilizer are incorporated into the soil that is called the tillage tillage soil incorporation method or rainfall with the rainfall also uh, or irrigation method some of the uh, fertilizers or chemicals are mixed with the water and it is applied extensively so without applying the spray it is applied through the either through the rainfall or through the irrigation methods so next is coming to the nozzle so 
so nozzle is the most important part of the uh, spring uh, system so first of all nozzle atomizes the liquids into small droplets with required size or effective size first of all it controls the amount of material which is to be applied in the field so the orifice size is very important so which actually controls the size of the droplet distribution and droplet pattern is very important according to the requirement of the crop or the system so it is actually uh, uh, just uh, done by the nozzle then if the nozzle is creating coarse droplets like this bigger droplets so then it will just drip uh, not drip more but at the same time it will not be covered all the area more liquid will be required and it will be just flooded and it will go to the liquid so there will minimize the uh, off target drip but if you go, go to the fine droplets there will be small droplets which will cover more maximum area but at the same time there will be more drip next coming to nozzle material mostly they are made of glass generally not used with abrasive material so plastic are the common nowadays mostly we use plastic or hardened stainless steel these are the two materials which are used nowadays and ceramic also used most uh, some of the cases and uh, they are actually uh, best suitable for uh, wettable powders and dry flowable materials so it will not be uh, clogging so plastic hardened steel and ceramics are mostly used next coming to uh, types of equipment first is ground granular applicators this look like this it applies the granular stops like this okay it's uh, generally used in bend or brackish type uh, so its application rate is affected by ground speed and gate opening so it's not actually uniform mostly there is ground wheel uh, is not there so therefore the uh, mostly the application rate is affected by the speed if you increase the speed then the application rate will be reduced and get uh, open the more gate uh, then it will be uh, delivering more uh, fertilizer or liquids uh, sorry pesticides so that the application rate is affected uh, mostly used for granular size and uh, more dense or a different type of shapes they can be used uh, also uh, it can be used in different uh, terrains uh, it affected by the terrains and weather condition if weather condition is very high so there will be clogging and not properly broadcasted and also uh, high terrain uh, different uh, uh, undulation will be there then it will just affect the application rate next application is the rotary spreader mostly it spreads the uh, manures or uh, fertilizers in the field so it is a spinning disc or fan heaviest granular thrown further so uh, bigger one is uh, thrown to the further and small one uh, just uh, drops at the uh, center so generally then drops uh, spreader actually it drops and uh, due to the gravity and it's more of research application actually wherever it is used just dropped in, into that one next is the other equipments like drops or dipping vats so when actually the uh, veterinary animals or uh, they are uh, has to be uh, sanitized so they are dipped into the chemicals so this is called the rubbing and dipping vats and uh, to control the termites or any other pests from the woods and other things they can be dipped in, into a uh, liquid or something like that then bed dispensers they are used for the uh, it means for uh, uh, mouse beds and other things so there are uh, uh, some uh, type of uh, applicators are there where actually it is dispensed to the to eat by the uh, rodents or any other animals which can be controlled then foggers generally to uh, generate fogs for the space application dusters to dust the small areas where actually required uh, basically to control the termites or any other small uh, insects which uh, damage the woods or uh, uh, household appliances any other things so basically they are called the dusters then chemigation basically the uh, with irrigation some chemicals are applied which is called the uh, chemigation so here actually correct amount of uh, chemicals are mixed with the irrigation water continuously when the irrigation water goes into the field some chemicals are mixed uh, with a venturi uh, uh, arrangements in the case of chemigation so you can see this this is the uh, arrangement where actually it is mixed next uh, coming to the what is vmd and nmd 
PMD is nothing but volume mean diameter or volume median diameter. And uh, if you say that uh, nozzle creates 100 uh, droplets, if you uh, actually arrange them from the smallest to biggest, so if smaller droplets one side and large droplets one, one side in a uh, uh, row with arranging, so if you see the half of the VMD is the diameter, where actually below that diameter, the uh, all the droplets having certain volume and above the diameter having certain volume. If the volumes are same or half of the spray volume this side and half of the spray volume is that side, so the diameter at which it cuts through is called the VMD or volume mean diameter. Similarly, number mean diameter if you see, uh, if you uh, arrange them from the big droplets to small droplets and there uh, according to the diameter also, that means the diameter at which the middle point of the diameter where actually the numbers in this side, uh, left side will be same as the number of right side. So therefore the diameter is uh, small in the case of uh, NMD and big at the case of uh, VMD. So if you see uh, all total VMD, NMD and one is VAD, it is called the volume average diameter. So VAD is the in between of the VMD and NMD. So always VMD is greater than NMD. So you should remember this sometimes a lot of times the question comes in the gate. So if you see NMD the diameter here, this is the D doublet size or diameter and this is the VMD here. So NMD is always less than VMD. So this is the fraction of number of volume. Uh, it's very simple. If you say this is the pi, uh, volume of the uh, big droplets are very high compared to volume of the small droplets. Next coming to the spray pattern. So first of all, when the spray is sprayed over the uh, plants, there is a pattern is maintained through the spray. First of all, the solid stream uh, pattern. So actually the nozzle creates solid, uh, jet, uh, you can say the uh, streams. Okay, at the point it, you can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, according to the number of nozzles or if it is on the nozzle, in this case one only. So you can see here it is a uh, solid stream, it's because one orifice is there, here actually there will be seven orifices are there, therefore they are making solid streams. Next coming to the flat spray, so the, the spray pattern is like a flat but they are uniformly distributed, so like this. And also it's a hollow cone, if the center, some of the circular uh, pattern is there, there will be no spray and at the bend will be there, this is the cone type will be there, where there will be spray, this is called the hollow cone spray. And also full cone, cone so where actually they, it's maintained like this, so this one is flat and this is cone type. So it will be, uh, you can see here, so the uh, these are, are uniform and here actually the uniformity is reduced to the nil, actually maximum is here, actually less is here. So this is full cone type uh, uh, spray patterns. Next coming to the full jet spray looks like this, then flat spray pattern looks like this. If you say this is there is flat, something like this, or helical structure, then hollow cone is like this. If you see the in, uh, in the middle there is no spray and if you see the uniform coverage is done by the full cone. Uh, spray pattern. So these are depending inside the uh, the orifice and uh, there is a swill plate. So according to that actually this is generated. And according to the pressure also there is a you can see here a swill plate is there. So it actually generates the cone uh, the pattern of the spray. And full coverage edge uh, side of the there is a orifice in the side of the nozzle. So actually this uh, generates a uh, line type band or you can say edge you can say it can be used to uh, spray at the edge of the any corner or any anywhere actually that cannot be um, uh, reached by this any other spray pattern. Next coming to the nozzle characteristic. First of all the nozzle characteristics was the spray pattern. First of all nozzle type uh, respective to the nozzle shape. So according to the nozzle shape or orifice shape, the spray pattern is generally uh, characterized. Spray volume is characterized by its diameter of the nozzle and also the pressure. So if the pressure is high, the volume of spray will be high and the diameter is more, the spray volume will be more, discharge will be more. So discharge is related to 
the uh, case spare volume is discharge or discharge related to area of the nozzle and uh, or you can see cross section area of the nozzle and pressure and coming to the droplet size generally droplet size is a combination of all three nozzle type pressure and volume all three is contributing towards the droplet size so droplet size is reduced or increased according to the pressure volume or nozzle type next coming to the discharge through a sprayer nozzle so as you already you know q is the discharge it is cd is the coefficient of discharge according it depends on the shape and size of the nozzle uh, or orifice then h is the head or uh, h is the head of the pressure pressure head you can say q is the discharge through the nozzle c is the coefficient of discharge a area is the a is the area of the orifice you can say uh, nozzle you can say d is the diameter of the nozzle uh, and also g is the acceleration due to gravity h is the head of the water in meter so it's uh, confusing that uh, pressure should be in water head in this case uh, to convert the pressure from pascal to water head you can see, uh, do like this one pascal is 1 newton per meter square and 1 kg per centimeter square uh, is equal to 10 meter of water head and 1 newton per meter square is equal to 9.8 into 10 to the minus 4 kg per centimeter square next coming to the nozzle discharge so discharge between two nozzles at different pressure first of all uh, if we say there are two pressures small pressure and high pressure so in this case the small pressure uh, is looking like this and high pressure actually is looking like this. so it is reaching to the more area you can see coverage is more its coverage is less so pressure is related to uh, small pressure small coverage uh, high pressure high coverage so means small pressure is related to a small volume and high pressure is related to high volume therefore the discharge is related to uh, pressure so therefore the discharge is uh, varies with the square root of pressure so in this case so q1 is uh, the pre discharge is here and q2 is discharge here and p1 is the pressure here and p2 is the pressure in the high pressure so q1 by q2 will be equal to h1 by h2 or water head so q1 is the discharge through the nozzle 1 q2 is the discharge through nozzle 2 and h1 is the head of the water in nozzle 1 and 2 or pressure is the in the nozzle 1 and pressure in the nozzle 2 is p2 so this is about the nozzle discharge uh, di uh, relation next coming to the droplet size and pressure the relations between droplet size and pressure is if you see the pressure this p1 and p2 is the pressure p1 is less than p2 or p2 is less, greater than p1 so the uh, droplet size is bigger in the case of small pressure and the droplet size is very small if you uh, increase the pressure therefore the droplet size actually varies with 1 by a uh, cube root of pressure this is very simple depending on the because uh, 4 by 3 pi r cube uh, is the um, you can say the volume of the uh, spray or uh, according to the diameter of the droplet so therefore the droplet size varies with 1 by cube root of pressure and uh, if you say d1 is the diameter here and d2 is the diameter in here then uh, pressure is p1 p2 so the uh, uh, relation will be or or, or you can say uh, indirectly you can say d, d is related to vmd or volume in diameter and d2 is the second one p2 is by p1 so vmd is the volume in diameter of the nozzle 1 and vmd uh, 2 is volume in diameter of the nozzle 2 at pressure p2 so the next is nozzle discharge and forward speed first of all so if the discharge rate is uh, less and forward uh, speed is more then there will be less application rate therefore the q uh, the discharge is directly proportional to uh, speed so q1 is discharged through a nozzle at a forward speed of s1 and q2 is the discharge through a nozzle at a forward speed of s2 that means to uh, have the same application rate you have to increase the uh, discharge if you increase the speed so when the speed increases discharge has to be increased through the nozzle so that the application rate will be constant so discharge of the sphere will be equal to q is equal to nq q, q is the individual uh, uh, that means uh, individual nozzles discharge and n is the number of nozzles q is the total discharge so you can say discharge of a sphere nozzle with operating width and application rate you can say q is equal to swf by 10 this liter per hec, uh, hour so q is the discharge through a nozzle that is meter cube per second and uh, s is the speed of the tractor kilometer per hour and w is the width covered by the one nozzle so they therefore uh, the discharge will be equal to uh, required through the nozzle is equal to hw by 10 
and f is the application rate in this case that is some liter per hectare so liter per hectare is the discharge so this is the uh, formula for the discharge through the nozzle next coming to the suction capacity with power sprayer so power sprayers are used uh, uh, so uh, here actually if, if you see the pump the pump has, is having a some discharge which actually depends on the area of the piston that is pi by 4 d square if you see the d is the diameter of the plunger or piston and uh, l is the stroke length of the plunger see like this l is the stroke length then n is the rpm of the uh, that means the driving motor to the pump then n is the number of plunger if uh, number of plungers will be there according to the, uh, according to the construction then the total discharge by the pump will be equal to ALN into N divided 60 that is a cubic meter per second. Next is the uniformity of sphere dis, uh, distribution. So let us see two, uh, one nozzle is there and two nozzles are there. They are having some spacing. So between the nozzle two nozzle spacing is let is W or width uh, of the sphere. Next uh, one nozzle is creating one uh, spray and another is uh, another nozzle is uh, just uh, delivering the nozzle uh, the discharge in this way this area is covered now if you see the uh, cone uh, pattern of the uh, both the uh, nozzle is like this and having a cone uh, angle of theta let is theta is the angle and this is the reference line or the uh, application line you can say the uh, field or ground you can say and this is the height of the nozzle uh, from the ground and D is the diameter of the nozzle, uh, there is the application diameter you can say on the uh, ground D and they are overlapping each other with a uh, distance that is, that is uh, these are the height of the nozzle from the ground edge and the half diameter of uh, angle of the uh, you can say the spray from the vertical line is let it theta by 2 because total angle is theta and uh, both are theta by 2 and we can say clearly from the this uh, any any uh, triangle 10 theta by 2 will be equal to d by 2 is this one divided by uh, this is base h and d is equal to 2 h 10 theta by 2 and also we know the width total width will be equal to f into d f is the uh, that means you, you can say this is uh, this is the f where h is the height of the bone theta is the spray angle d is the spray diameter you can say this is the spray diameter so this becomes like this and uh, f is equal to called the uh, 100 minus overlap so that means if the overlapping is there something so overlapping in uh, percentage percentage overlapping 20 percent 20 percent then we can say the width can be calculated as f into d so f is called the 100 if 100 percent no overlapping is there then this will be f will be 100 and if 20 percent overlapping is there then uh, the width will be equal to 0.8 d so this is the case so for uh, uniform over uh, distribution, spray distribution, some overlapping is actually done. So this is about the spray distribution. Hope and W is the operating width of the uh, nozzle. So hope you understand this uh, lecture and please like and subscribe to my channel.